And what is Nash Equilibrium? Well, it's basically a no regrets equilibrium where every single player, after all of the dust is settled, all is said and done, every player can say, given what the other player or players did, I'm happy with my choice. Another way of saying that is it's a best response to a best response. Meaning, both players can say, given what they did, my best response is the choice I made. And the other player can say the same thing. Now that doesn't necessarily mean best choice or best outcome, but let's actually solve these problems so you can see how it's done. So we've got a game with Harry and Hermione, and Harry's payoffs in this case are red, he's player one, so his payoffs are always the first payoffs listed. His strategies are up and down. So to solve these, we first start by thinking from Harry's perspective, meaning we only care about the red outcomes. And yet, and here's the trick, we check Hermione's strategies. That's the weird part. So with Harry, we say, okay, I care about the red payoffs, but I'm going to go one by one over each of Hermione's strategies. And I'm going to say, if Hermione goes left, well, I prefer the four or the six, and I prefer the six as Harry. And if Hermione goes right, well, I as Harry prefer the seven or the nine, and I prefer the nine. So he actually has a dominant strategy, meaning his best response is always down, no matter what she does. And then once we've done Harry's perspective, we're going to flip perspectives and look at the whole thing from Hermione's perspective, looking only at the second payoffs listed since she's player two. And yet Hermione is going to check Harry's strategies to say, what's my best response? So Hermione comes here and Hermione says, checking Harry's strategies, if Harry went up, I as Hermione would prefer the eight rather than the four. And then Hermione says, if Harry goes down, then I as Hermione would prefer the three over the two. And then anytime you have two circles in the same box, that means it's a best response to a best response or Nash equilibrium. Now we notice here that we have an interesting situation because both players would prefer this box up here, but yet this is the Nash Equilibrium. And that this is actually a prisoner's dilemma, I won't get into that here, but let's do this next box. Starting from Elizabeth's perspective, we look at all Elizabeth's payoffs, and yet we check Mr. Darcy's strategies. So Elizabeth says, if Mr. Darcy went left, then I as Elizabeth would prefer the five rather than the three. If Mr. Darcy went right, then I as Elizabeth would prefer the four rather than the two. And then we flip perspectives and think from Mr. Darcy's perspective as player two, yet he is going to check Elizabeth's strategies. He says if Elizabeth goes up, he would prefer the nine over the six. And if Elizabeth goes down, he would prefer the seven rather than the five. So in this box, we actually have two different Nash equilibriums. Now, what if your game is not nice and color-coded like these are? Well, in that case, I actually have a tip. In that case, sometimes I will underline the payoffs um, to begin with, just to help me organize my, my thoughts. So down here, Ron is player one, and so I'm going to underline all of the player one strategies, and I'm going to say Ron is going to check Neville's strategies. So Ron says if Neville goes left, Ron would prefer the nine over the five. And then if Neville goes right, Ron would prefer the seven over the two. And then I flip perspectives. Now this time I'm going to be looking at the non-underlined payoffs. And I'm Neville now, so I'm going to say as Neville, I'm going to check Ron's strategies. So if Ron went up, I as Neville would prefer the eight over the four. And if Ron went down, I would prefer the six over the three. So in this game, we have no Nash equilibrium. And then let me do one without the colors. So Emma is player one, meaning she cares about the first payoff listed. Those are her payoffs. She's going to check Mr. Knightley's strategies. So she says, if Mr. Knightley went left, she would prefer the seven over the four. 
If Mr. Knightley went right, she would prefer the eight over the five. Then we flip perspectives and think about from Mr. Knightley's perspective, which is the second payoff, and yet we check Emma's strategies. So we, Mr. Knightley says, if Emma went up, he would prefer the four rather than the three. If Emma went down, he would prefer the seven rather than the rather than the six. So in every single box up here where there are two circles in the same box, that's a best response to a best response or a no regrets strategy.